Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about heat shrink tubing or something like this. So let's dive right into it. So what exactly is the problem that we need something weird as like, you know, shrink tubes? Well, we use wire, meaning you don't just, uh, you know, basically buy wire and be like, I'm done with it. You use it, like you could put crimps connector on it, so you can put in a plug, you can make, make a harness out of it where you'll have some fat cables, some thin data cables, things of that nature. We use the wires. So we may require things like crimping, uh, we may require joining two cables or we may even require reinforcement either by because of rat or like some other damage or like you know garbage design from apple things of that uh, scenario require some use to it now wires have two core parts meaning what do you see that's the insulation part that's it now here's the deal this is also important insulation is also important meaning we are familiar with a uh, basically conductor like for example this is like 2.5 square mm cable so that's okay that's good and every time i'm making a good crimp or soldering it everything is awesome but here's deal that itself is not good enough many time you may have a, especially in a densi densified cabinet or electrical system where you have too many wires next to each other if insulation is not good it's dangerous and like for example if rat starts to make love to your cable uh, that's uh, not good not good let's just put it that way so we have to worry about both both of them basically wire the conductor side of things and protective insulator that also matters both needs to be managed properly and you may be like okay if you have scenario like this what do we do we would put electrical tape on it well it does work but majority of people have a very bad experience with this simply because they do not last and the use requirement is very complicated and if you are exposed to the outdoor environment good luck this will not work it will flat out not work it's not that good basically it's okay but not something that you can count on rely on so what is the logic of basically this sort of shrink tubes? The logic is kind of very interesting. It's a thermoplastic, basically it reacts to thermal energies and it has memory into it. That's the core difference here. Now you generally make it into final size, meaning the shape it will get if you heat it up. Yeah, it may sound counterintuitive, but that's how it's built. Meaning uh, if this shrink tube is supposed to be 5 mm, it will be made as 5 mm once you shrink it. So once you made it 5 mm, here's the deal. Then you uh, basically radiate it to achieve what we call cross-linked. Cross-linked simply uh, changes the molecular formulas and uh, core architecture so it gains memory. At this point in time, you will heat it up and then you expand it. Meaning now you will make it into 10 mm and then you will sell it to a user. Basically, that's what you are buying. You are buying expanded scenario. That's why uh, whenever you, uh, you know, research paper on this, especially on like a large scale enterprise or if you're buying bulk load, you will always say people talking about relief diameter. Like why the heck you are talking about relief? It's not molten diameter. It's like molten system and all that. It's like why relieved? That's the whole point. The structure here does not want to stay in 10 mm diameter. It's supposed to go back to the structure that like it was built in. Now, how do you do that? You add heat to it and then it recovers. That's why it will always say like, you know, recovered uh, diameter. That's the whole reality of it. And how do you sell it to you? Well, they will say shrink ratio, meaning two to one, three to one. For example, this is two to one. Majority of the time you will buy two to one. Uh, that means if it uh, says, if it sells you the outer diameter, meaning what you can hold in your hand, if it says two to one, that means it will shrink to five to one. And if it's like, you know, 30 mm one then it will shrink to if uh, shrink to 10 mm if it's three to one it may be written in differently it you may have a scenario where you are unlucky and you find something that written as like 50 percent or like 30 percent that could also happen so that's the logic behind it that's why basically all this plastic wants to go back to the original state but again energy cannot be created nor destroyed so you need to add energy we add energy through heat system so uh, the plastic tries to go back if there is no constraint here there is nothing blowing on it so it's like i want to shrink the moment you have something there like for a cable or uh, you know crimps it conforms to it basically it tries to get back to the original step basically shrinking it like a rubber glove but it cannot but it's a permanent deformation now it cannot go un back unless you burn it in those sort of now you're destroying it so that's the logic behind it it's a thermoplastic now be mindful there are many 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 varieties of it and depending on your application depending on your budget you will find different things or most of the time you may end up buying pvc vinyl and there are some advanced complicated stuff which are built specifically for some things like for example if you are buying something that is designed for heavy use as in like making sure it's in relative to 11 kV AC voltage, yeah, it's gonna be a bit more different to it. It more have oomph to it. So that's the logic behind it. So what are the benefits of, uh, you know, using heat shrink? Well, it stops wire fraying, for example, if you have a lot of like this uh, scenario where you have computer cable, you have a lot of cable there and uh, it's like, you know, plugged in a desktop, not a big deal. But imagine the same system. It happens. It's in your uh, car. Now you have vibrations. If you have this many small cables which are not tied together independently uh, uh, to itself, 
it's gonna shake apart. Basically, either the jacks will fall apart or the cable will start to fray. It has happened. That's why we use shrink tubes. It allows us to make cable harnesses. Any vehicle you see, uh, any submarines, anything you see generally have insane amount of cable harness. The best way to manage cable harness is generally shrink tubes. That's why we utilize that. Protection against environment, meaning if done correctly, done properly, or done with proper tools, you can reach a point where water cannot touch it. Now it's like, what's the point? Like, you know, this side, this part is export. Here's the, if you have a very long cable, like for example, uh, this long cable, let's say you have around one meter long cable, the less exposed copper you will have, the longer lifespan it will have because everything oxidizes, especially if you have electricity running through it, especially if you have this uh, similar metal touching each other, galvanic corrosions. So things of that nature happens always, no matter what you do, things will corrode and you want to make sure that happens as little as possible. And if, for example, let's say you uh, shrink tube till the jointer and that jointer is waterproof mechanical joint, then you don't have to worry about it. Everything beyond that point is waterproof anyway. So that's a, and protection from environment, from dust, from debris, from grease, oil, all those things is, uh, you know, protected against. And it's not like a, you know, insulation tape where it's like after a while the glue starts to weaken and then it starts to unravel. It will not happen. It allows, allows for long lasting insulation. For example, I specified 11 kV also uses this. Think of it this way. What will happen if you have a 11 kV uh, heat shrink and it does not last? They last. How long? For decades for almost even centuries. Some heat shrinks are that old. Uh, so not that old as in like it was made in 1960s. So we are not reaching that century market, but many high voltage installations have heat shrinks that have been put in 1990s or 1980s. So it, they last very long time. And insulation is like, it's something that you count on. And great strain relief for cable. That's why it's generally used for uh, basically iPhone charger cables. And uh, any place where you have a harness where thick cable is uh, coming out and it has multiple small cables or wires inside it, in those sort of scenario, heat shrink acts as a very good strain relief. So no single cable ends up bearing the whole brunt and load is distributed equally. That makes it longer lasting. There are a lot of benefits of it. Like think of this way, like this, uh, you put the cable there and then you have a jointer at the end of it to make it watertight. It will work. And again, in watertight does not mean moisture cannot get it, it's just water itself should not be able to get into it. But what if moisture reacts to it? Again, it can't, there is no enough space there. So that's the whole point. That's why it allows us to uh, basically, without heat shrink, you cannot have a like cable harness that we have right now. Like you have to use something even more complex than that. So what about the uses? Again, high voltage cable. This is pretty sure uh, most of you would have seen, especially in India, since these things are uh, everywhere, every transformer has it. So these are made on site, meaning a custom, uh, if you have a big building, it has its own transformer. This cable will be provided by, uh, basically connected from substation and provided to you uh, by your power company. And then you will have to do all this. All these are very high quality heat shrinks. So it is a compulsory requirement. Otherwise, this is a very dangerous and uh, power application, even like, again, this is 11 kV. It does not mean it only has to be done for high voltage. It can also be done for low voltage as in like 220 volts or even 48 volts. If you want to have a scenario where you want to rely on it, you will try to use heat shrink and integratable in mass production. For example, you have a scenario where you have a crimp connection. You want to insulate it. You want to give it robustness. You have a wire. You want to give it strain relief. Can you do those things with the tape? No, not for long term. And, but if you use heat shrink, you can automate that process meaning all it will this is your cable shrink your cable in send it through an oven exactly how you do with your uh, soldering system you have a pick and place machine you pick and place and then you put in a solder it melts everything awesome same thing will happen here it just goes through an oven that's how like power supply cables your car cables that's how it's built there is a machine uh, called an oven that's all that's all it does the cream uh, system shrinking system diy meaning this is the most common use of uh, shrink tubes because again apple makes such a garbage cable and then patch up jaws for example now again this sort of system is generally not done for home electron electrical appliance you can do it and many times people prefer to do it if especially if the house is not properly watertight in some scenarios you may have ludicrous amount of rain and no amount of concrete is like lasting long enough where it's like you know again you can make concrete last long enough but you don't have the money for it. So you may heat shrink everything because again, you do not want moisture or water directly to seep into your electrical system. So if even if that happens, like let's say water reach inside the conduit, you want to be damn sure where it's like, it will not cause an issue, use heat shrink. Cable harnesses, complex systems, generally is, uh, if you are dealing with a hotel system where you have multiple cables, if those cables do not have properly management, you're gonna have a short circuit, you're gonna have a short circuit. So there are a lot of uses of it.
there are a few extra types of it. For example, when I say heat sink, you generally think of something like this. And this is the most common thing you will get. However, this is just Mark 1. There are many other products. For example, heat sink with solder connectors. These are generally preferred by car enthusiasts and uh, people who are working on car electronics. So basically, if they want to splice a cable, basically they want to join two cables, uh, they will just slide this puppy in, uh, strip the cable and join the wires and then slide it back in and heat this puppy up. The solders here are specifically designed to have very low uh, melting point. So it will melt before the heat shrink catches on fire and then it will you know, create the solder. And these color ribbons that you are saying, basically red, yellow and uh, white and blue, these are glue. They will also melt and that will seal that scenario, meaning the heat shrink itself is acting and the glue will double sure that no water can creep in. There is no ingress there. So it's really, really easy to use. Now, is this very amazing thing for high power application? Hell no. Generally, people will not prefer to use it for, let's say you have a subwoofer that has GG amounts of power consumption. That shall not use this. But for anything that is like, you know, um, few amps kind of requirement, this should do the job well enough. Automotive use and ease of use is very high. Meaning if you have two cables, you just put it in, don't think too much about it. That's the whole aspect of it. Very easy to use. Then we have a DC uh, heat shrinks, meaning your heat shrinks, Basic ones have nothing in it, nothing. Like you can put your finger there, there's nothing there. But adhesive heat shrinks generally have a specific type of glue. Now that's thermally activated glue, so it's also a bit robust. It will bond with your structure. Now what's the point of it? Water tightness, meaning, and even gas tight you can achieve simply because it's an actual glue there. Because if you're shrinking it, you may not have a scenario where it's like absolutely every single nook and cranny and crevices is properly sealed. But glue will make sure it's there. It, all, it will almost bond. So really amazing for ingress protection. Basically, this is the thing that you will find in every boats uh, where it's like salty water is there. They have to be damn sure if you are splicing cables, if you are joining cables, it's absolutely rock solid. That's uh, that's the way they can achieve it. Then we come to the, you know, ease of use category, heat shrink label printers, meaning you can buy almost any, uh, you know, label printer from a reputable brand. They will have a, a series of cartridges that are specifically built for, uh, you know, shrink tubes, even from Casio or uh, Brother and things of that nature. You can easily buy them. It will allow them for naming and organization. That may not sound like a big deal if you have a house where it's like barely you have five to 10 rooms. Imagine a hotel with like let's say 50 rooms in those sort of scenario cable that has proper name that's amazing important and uh, not to mention in army many of the equipments generally have a serial number built into it now that serial number is literally bonded on this why think of this well let's say you are working on a submarine your cable broke things happen big people big strong people you pull on the cable cable breaks okay here's deal all you have to do is pull up the cable cable will have a heat shrink serial number into this tell the you know your inventory staff bro i need the serial number that's it they will figure it out and they will give it to you so in that sort of scenario that's a very uh, priceless thing so organization is also done like and these are the three that i'm just telling you there are many many more types of uh, unique things so you, you should google it like what can be done with shrink tubes so i have provided a video download that you should also check out so these are extra types of heat shrink that allows us to get a bit more out of it so this was my presentation on shrink tubes. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.